Lots of people out here this morning. Uh, a bit different from last week when we walked, we went, but we got absolutely soaked. <laughs> Today we're going to get blown to bits, I suppose. Uh, there you go. Anyway, um, I'll leave you in the capable hands of our knowledgeable man of Westbury, Steve Hobbs, who will take all as we pass around the town. Thank you, Roy. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I think the problem this week is actually you hearing me. Last week we were all very close together because it was all wet. We were sharing umbrellas. But this week, <laughs> as, as Roy says, it's very windy and blowy. But please, you know, yeah, that, gather around closely if you can't hear or if, you, if you're finding difficulty, just, just move in. I, I won't feel... Um, <laughs> I'm not feeling too <laughs> frightened or scared. Um, warm at yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'm a resident of Westbury, so I do have a, a great interest in the history of the town, but I also work as an archivist at the History Centre at Chippenham, uh, the Wiltshire and Swindon History Centre, which is jointly run by Wiltshire Council and Swindon Borough Council. And it's a lot from the archive material and resources which we have at the History Centre that the knowledge that I've gained over the years, which I'm hoping to share with you today, um, has come from. So it's original archive material. I'm sure, as always happens when I go on these walks, um, members of the audience have local anecdotes and information to add and I'm very pleased to hear it. And if you do feel that contributing to anything that has our buildings as we pass, please do chip in. I should be glad of um, giving my voice a rest, <laughs> as I'm sure the, re the rest of the audience will probably be as well. Anyway, it's a, it's a history walk around Westbury. Fairly short, compact walk. We're not going to be going right up um, to the Laverton, for instance, but a very important historical building in the town, largely because of the narrow pavements and busy roads. So we're going to sort of keep fairly close here, up down into Church Street, round down into Alfred Street, back to the marketplace, Maristow Street and back. But if anything like last week's to go judged by, I think we took about an hour, over an hour or so. So um, it's going to be about an hour, an hour and a half or so. So please do chip in with any information that you or comments that you feel you wish to uh, might be uh, everyone would like to share. Now, this is very much um, a, a history tour, but it's predominantly based from material and information that we've got from the 19th century. Most of what I'm going to say really is talking about Westbury in the 19th century, with, with some notable exceptions. And when we think about Westbury, where we live, nearby where we live. We think of a small country town um, where most of the inhabitants, working inhabitants, probably work outside, away from the town itself, in Bath and Trowbridge, or the larger towns and, and cities in and around. We don't think of Westbury um, as an industrial town, and yet that was very much how it was in the 19th century and earlier. And the principal industry um, of this area of Westbury and the area was the woolen industry, the clothing industry that was based predominantly in the West Wiltshire towns and East Somerset towns, so Froome and Trowbridge, Bradford on Avon. And around that area, as you travel round, you'll see the remains of the old mill buildings. We're going to look at a couple of them today in Westbury. So it's very much um, an industrial town. The kind of thing that you might imagine in, um, in the northern industrial towns of the sort of 20th century. Um, very much Westbury was that. It was at the, the centre of a major um, industrial industry, the, the woolen industry. And in fact, nearly all of the older properties in the town, the older larger properties in the town, have a clothing uh, association through the owners as, as the, of the mill operators, the mill owners. So my file's just coming apart. It's a bit windy day. Um, so we start off, it's convenient to start outside the library because there's a nice area where we can gather in and I can uh, say my first few words. And in fact, I want to start by talking about the library. We've known the library as such. It's been a, a public library since about 1970. Previous to that, it was a private home. It was built around about 1800 by Will or for William Open, a brick burner, brick maker, probably with brickworks over in Eatonvale Road area. But very quickly, it was purchased by John Matravers, a clothier in Westbury. And it was Matravers who we'll talk a little bit more about when we go up to the Angel Mill, because the Angel Mill was the mill which he built. 
and very typically with the industrial situation, the industrial um, towns of the 19th, 18th, 19th century, um, the industrious, the, the, the workers and owners worked hugger-mugger with the factories near their workshops and factories. So here we've got the Westbury House, the house of the family, and at the bottom of the garden you can still see the vestiges of the garden with the planted trees and the grass going up the lawn there. At the bottom of the garden was the factory and it's a very, very typical situation. When the Lavertons came in and owned and bought the mill in the 19th century and gradually made their wealth through, through the industry, they, um, W.H. Laverton, moved out to the new house out on the Lee Road, uh, late, out at Leighton House, and moved away, moving back away from all the, the industrial sites in town. But very much in the 18th and 19th century, everything was very much hugger mugger together. And in fact, the house in which the Matravers lived we have insurance registers um, from 1836 which refer to the, t the home, home mill, a mill probably in the site of where the, um, yeah, the houses are, where the, the, the restaurant used to be. That's a slightly later building. But there was a mill factory attached to the, to the house. So right again to the house there was a small factory. Matravers also um, had a schoolroom in the, in the house. That's mentioned in the insurance um, register. And that was a school, Matravers was a non-conformist, and that school, I think, transferred to the Laverton in the, in the, in the, 17, in the 1870s, and, um, and subsequently closed, and then with, with the schooling changing in, in the town, and, uh, moved into other schools. And in fact, there is that connection with the Matravers in schooling in the name of our school, Matravers School, which one of the members of the walk last week, who was a teacher at the school, told me, um, I was, I was saying that oh, you know, there's a connection, the education connection, the Travers and the Travers School. And he said, well, there's a far more practical reason, uh, saving cost of stationery. Um, Westbury Secondary Modern School, uh, WSM, easily um, converted to um, the Travers School Westbury. <laughs> I think, but I mean, there's definitely an educational link there, which I think someone picked up on. But um, it obviously saved a bit of, they didn't have to check all their stationery out in, 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 immediately. So there's a why, why does him being a non-conformist in um, school? Well, I, I think that, that's not and that's not all the cynic I know. He did not always the situation that, but I mean, non-conformists often felt if there was they would like to they, they felt worthy cause to produce to in, in introduce the school to, to educate the children of other non-conformists, not necessarily in church like in Anglican church oh. doctrine. So it's, it's quite common that, that it's not an uncommon thing, but it's not always, you know, it's not an, an inevitable um, result. So Matravers lived in the house until the, the 1840s when his fortunes failed. Um, and well, actually, his, his son, his son uh, William Matravers, took over, and then the Lavertons bought up the house and lived here for a time and then ran the mill. So it's a, it, it's a, a strong connection between that building and the woollen industry. And then as we look around us here, um, we've got the Garden House Hotel. Again, an early, uh, late 18th, early 19th century house with evidence of workshops, clothing um, workshops, woollen workshops at the back of the building. Um, there is um, a belief that, that, that's often expressed, uh, I've heard uh, repeated that this was the house that was designed or intended to be the station master's house when the railway came to Westbury but the railway people didn't want the railway in the town and therefore it never became such 